This CCTV of Eleanor Williams buying a hammer in Tesco would be used in court to prosecute her. Police say it's what she used to injure herself in an effort to support lies that she'd been raped and battered by multiple men. Now Miss Williams has been sentenced to eight and a half years in jail for perverting the course of justice. There is no explanation for why the defendant would commit these offences. She has gone to extraordinary lengths to create false accusations, including causing herself significant injury. Outside court, men she'd falsely accused spoke of the impact of her crimes. I've had my landlord call me a rapist, I've had people across the road call me a rapist, I've had neighbours call me a rapist, you know, just mud sticks, like, everyone looks at you, everyone knows who you are, you know what I mean, like, because I was named in the paper for such a serious sexual offence, what I didn't do. The way we were targeted as a community, and then we were, as in the, being the community of Barrow, then we were, like, picked out, it's a persecution. It's, it's a sense of persecution that took place in the 21st century. And it was just, we're going for the Asians. And it was a full-on targeted towards the Asians. Eleanor Williams' claims about an alleged Asian grooming gang, which she posted on Facebook, changed the peaceful seaside town of Barrow. Although some of the men she alleged raped her were white, the small Asian community were harassed and spat at. Windows were smashed. Amid protests erupting in town, police couldn't yet reveal they had evidence she was lying. For example, this footage of her checking into a hotel in Blackpool on her own at a time she claimed she was being raped in a number of different properties. There's a number of victims in this case, men um, who've been arrested, subjected to intimate examinations, some held in custody uh, for periods of time. And then there's all the wider community issues and tensions resulting from this case. I, you know, I've never seen anybody, I've, I've had cases where people have told lies, but never ever to this extent. And I, and I do believe that if she hadn't been charged in this instance, it just wouldn't have stopped. Miss Williams was found to have set up numerous fake social media accounts to message herself to make it appear that she was receiving messages from abusers. Speaking for the first time, Eleanor's sister Lucy says that sometimes her sister did doctor things on her phone, but says she filmed threatening texts as they came through, including a video of a gun and pictures of machetes, and says she witnessed intimidation firsthand. One of the men was harassing Ellie at the bar, mm. um, and some of our friends seen it, and they'd warned him off. He grabbed her outside of the takeaway, started pulling her around. He was like, come on, we're going. She did was you like, see that? Yeah. You so say you saw someone grab her? Yeah, and she was like, no, I'm going with my sister, and his face, he was so angry with her. Um, and she, came, she did come home with me, and then the next weekend she came back black and blue, like, worse than we'd ever seen. Lucy believes this was a different man, not named as a victim in the case. It was Lucy who took the photos of the injuries that Eleanor posted on Facebook that a pathologist would later say in court were consistent with being self-inflicted. But Lucy doesn't accept that. Do you think there's any chance, theoretically, that on that occasion she hurt herself? No. In order to create more impact? No. That on that occasion, that one time, she couldn't have done it to herself? I don't believe so, no. Very few other people have seen those injuries firsthand. Yeah. You have. Yeah. You were there. Just describe them. I've never seen anything like it. Obviously, I've worked in nursing homes and I've seen some awful stuff, but nothing like what I've seen on LA. Police say they've investigated every claim and found no evidence of abuse. She would regularly present at work, at home, with bruises and other injuries. Do you think they were all self-inflicted? Uh, that certainly the evidence points to it. Was there any other... Because, I mean, when the defence made the point that only that the images from May 2020 were examined by a pathologist, why, why were the other, other bruises not examined? Well, uh, in a lot of the cases with the other uh, bruising, it was very difficult in time to say when, when they'd occurred. You know, we didn't have, um, pro you know, proper uh, police photographs of a lot of those injuries. Mm. Um, so it was decided to focus on the injuries in May 2020. Did you have police photographs of the injuries in May 2020? Uh, we, we didn't, but we had some good, um, good photographs of them. That we were taken able to by present. her sister? Yeah, that we were able to present to the uh, expert. So it was the pictures taken by her sister, not police photographs, that the pathologist made the conclusion on? Yeah, I mean, if you were in court, you'd have seen which photographs were used.
Eleanor's family accept she lied about things, such as claims that she was trafficked abroad. But for her mother, Alison, it doesn't make the verdict any less painful. And how did you feel when that guilty verdict came through? Heartbroken. Were you there? Were you in the court? Just describe it to me. I can't. I can't. I still, I still, I still can't take it in now, really. It just doesn't feel real. The person that the press are betraying is not the person I know. What do you think her motives were for, for making up the things that she, she did make up? I just believe that she was trying to get people to listen to her. In a statement read in court, Miss Williams says she was sorry for mistakes she'd made, but she didn't admit guilt. The men who faced false allegations say that is a hollow apology. Jason Farrell, Sky News.